We turn the corner to week number two of the college basketball season. Women's hoop coming up this afternoon from Reynolds Coliseum in Raleigh. NC State ranked fifth in the country, taking on the Florida Gators. Great to have you with us. Eric Freed alongside Stephanie Whites and NC State jumped into the deep end of the pool in game number one, Steph. They took on number one South Carolina here in this building. Came up short, but now you get into the rhythm and the, just the kind of every day of college basketball season. What's NC State need to do going forward? Well, they've got to execute better, and that has to start with going inside to your All-American. Elisa Kunain has to get more touches. They have to find a way to get her into a rhythm. 9 of 23 in the first two games of the season, and you can see right there, preseason player of the year, her last season stats. they got established early. Play inside out. NC State coming off a victory against Wofford here in the preseason WNIT on Friday night. Florida came up short against a hot shooting Towson team, but Jordan Merritt had a very good game, a career high 18 points, 11 rebounds for her second career double double. So Merritt, the sophomore out of Texas, someone playing with a lot of confidence. Florida comes in one and one on the season. NC State at one and one, and there are some familiar faces on this Florida team and Kiki Smith and Lavender Briggs. We're ready Sunday afternoon basketball you ready stuff i'm ready i have a feeling you've Let's been ready. go you are ready at 8 a.m for the tip that's right opening tip controlled by florida we're underway here at kyao court kiki smith back outside to merritt who showed some outside touch last time out with smith that's what she does so well that little floater has dropped a time or two in her great florida career kiki smith reyna perez with Kai Crutchfield, Jakia Brown-Turner, Kayla Jones, Elisa Kunain, the starting five for NC State. And Jordan Merritt, a little contact outside the three-point line for the first foul of the afternoon. Florida starting five, led by Kiki Smith, the grad student who's been battling an injury, who had such a great finish last year. Second team all-conference, Lavender Briggs, of course, now nine months removed from a foot injury. She's not at 100% yet. Mentioned Merritt. Nino Cards in the starting five along with Faith Dukes on the inside. Crutchfield. Right away, you're going to see Florida get after it on the defensive end. They want to be aggressive. We saw NC State working on their pressure releases today, and that's what they have to do, get touches inside to Kunain early. Gators foul, number 25. So already a couple of fouls on Florida. I mentioned last time out they lost to Towson 87-70. They were outscored. The Gators were 37-20 in the first quarter. Towson was 7-8 of 8 on 3. So they've got to come out with a little bit more intensity as Kunane gets her first points. NC State and shoot-around today really working on looking at those slips. Kunane gets a nice easy bucket there. Faith Duke rolls to the basket for her first two. Nine total points in her first two games. She's battling an injury in the preseason, a shoulder problem. She's got it wrapped up pretty well here in the starting five for Florida. Kinane. Florida gets a stop, and here is Lavender Briggs. This is what Florida wants to do, much different than they had been in the past. They want to push in transition, but push with poise, get good looks. Smith couldn't finish Perez in transition. Gantry to Kayla Jones. She too working her way back from injury. And you can see what an impact she can have because she is so crafty. First team all conference a year ago. Well, Kayla Jones is a, not just a glue player, but somebody who can give really good production inside. Kanane one and done for Florida. Crutchfield for three. I love what NC State's doing right away. They're establishing inside. They're getting paint touches. They're attacking off the bounce. And then they're taking the open threes off of the driving kick. Merritt tries for three. Kiki Smith fights on the offensive glass and was fouled. So Smith will go to the free throw line to shoot a couple. Her first. First on the Already some trouble on the glass for Florida, so they'll bring some size in with the six foot four floor Tonders. Faith Duke will head to the bench, and Kiki Smith will go to the line to shoot a couple. Smith on the line. 
Kiki was limited against Towson, just had eight points and three assists in that loss to the Tigers. Westmore coming off a win, win number 749 in his long, successful career. And he has got it going here at NC State, two-time defending ACC tournament champions. Turner. Perez on the pull-up. Good fight on the glass, but Florida had it for a moment. Crutchfield takes it away. And another whistle against the Gators. And already that's three fouls here in the first quarter. Kelly Ray Finley, the interim head coach for Florida. We'll have more on how she was moved into this position coming up in just a bit. She's really done a good job keeping this group together. Kiki Smith to Briggs. Yes. And Briggs finishes. Lavender Briggs is a player who struggled offensively getting into a rhythm as well. Getting easy scores in transition is going to be important for Florida. Foot injury was February 15th, and she is still working up to full strength. Hasn't been able to practice, hasn't been a full go in a lot of ways. Turnover, NC State, here come the Gators. Smith comes up short, but Briggs has the long rebounds. will try a three and Briggs good job to get around Brown Turner's box out attempt and she was fouled she'll go to the free throw line Florida doing a really good job of crashing the offensive glass and we saw it in the first half for NC State against Wofford as well giving up second chance opportunities and if you're Florida you've got to take advantage of those well, it was a slow start for NC State against Wofford to open up the preseason WNIT. It was a five-point game at halftime. Wes Moore told us this morning that we said, well, what was, what was halftime like? And, you know, you've been there. You've done that. He said, well, some of the paint peeled off. And then we asked a couple of his players just to corroborate that story. And uh, Jakia Brown-Turner and Elisa Kunain both raised eyebrows when we said, what was that halftime speech like? Oh, a aggressive. Little aggressive. Was one. Yeah, a little aggressive. Aggress but he wasn't thrilled with how they came out in the first half. And here they are down by two in the first half of game number three. Well, and they both said it's it's what was needed. Uh, Elisa Kunain talked about, well, we've said we're a second half team, but we have to be consistent in the first half to get to where we want to go. Diamond Johnson into the game for NC State. Rutgers transfer. And Florida has been assessed team foul number four. Well, we were both on that call, the officiated call. They're going to call the hand check every time. They want to establish pace and rhythm on the offensive end of the floor. Florida's going to have to adjust. Trying to feed it inside to Kinane. You can see how Florida's trying to deny her with three Gators all around. Jones. Crutchfield, shot clock to four. Crutchfield rattles in another three. Again, getting paint touches for NC State off the bounce, kicking back out for those open threes. I thought Crutchfield hesitated a little bit. She could have taken that in rhythm, but knocked it down anyway. She usually doesn't hesitate. No, she usually doesn't. 47% from outside the arc last year. Well, this is a team that loves to shoot the three, and getting that three in rhythm is really important. Turnover by the Gators. That is their first. The ball is going to go inside and backside right there. Kai Crutchfield knocking it down. Three-year starter for the Wolfpack. All-tourney team last year. Held the 10 points in the first two games. Off to a good start here against Florida out of the SEC. Matchup of ACC and SEC teams here in the preseason WNIT. Really good looking in this 1-4 high set. Jones going to take the three. Also had Perez coming off the backside. Smith batted away. Another chance here for Merritt, who knocks down a three-pointer. 
one of the benefits of having Jordan Merritt on the floor is her versatility. Not only is she able to score it inside, but able to stretch the defense from three. It's a tough matchup for a big. It's Leah Weiss into the game for Florida. Kinane. And that is going to be foul number five on Florida. So free throws when we come back to Reynolds Coliseum. Close in the opening minutes in Raleigh. Kelly Ray Finley is a familiar face on the Florida bench, but now she is the interim head coach. She took over on July 16th with Cam Neubauer, resigned after that resignation. Allegations came to light. You see them detailed there. And just watching how Kelly has tried to keep things moving forward here for Florida, which is very challenging when you see stories like this. And now she's put in an interim role. How do you think she has handled it? Because this is not an easy situation for her, or certainly not for these players, more importantly. It's not an easy situation, but it does make it easier for the players when you have some continuity. Kelly Ray Finley's been there as an assistant coach. She is now a new role in interim head coach, but it does give the players consistency. They're going to play a little bit different system. You know, but, but one of the main things that Kelly Ray Finley talked to us about was just you know, allowing these players to enjoy playing basketball, getting them out there, keeping them together. I mean, the way the transfer portal is right now, to be able to keep this group together, bring them all back, and try to move forward collectively is really important. People may remember that back in your playing days was just like five minutes ago. Yeah, five minutes, yeah. Maybe six minutes ago. But <laughs> it ended with cutting down the nets and winning a national championship. But to get to that point, you had three different head coaches, so you and your teammates had to really adjust to different things as you went through your Purdue career. Right, three coaches in four years. And the thing that, that was so important was the transition to Carolyn Peck, who was an assistant coach, who took us to the national championship game. And, and it was really important just to keep camaraderie together. And I think Carolyn pushed the right buttons and, well, I mean. Absolutely. It, it helped that you averaged 20 points a game and won the Wade <laughs> Trophy senior year. But, the, you know, that's just an afterthought. Nice look. Kinane to the basket. Can't get it. Oh, but she's not done. Took away from Briggs and then finds Johnson cutting for two. Good job by Kinane sticking with it. Yeah, really good second effort by Kinane. And I think that's a good look for Diamond Johnson. Diamond Johnson is a dynamic offensive player. She didn't play as well as she wanted to against South Carolina, but trying to find a rhythm as a new player coming into an established NC State core. Madison Hayes into the game out of the timeout, the transfer from Mississippi State. Merritt tried to drop it down. Kinane saved it for Crutchfield. Perez. Johnson had it blocked. Diamond Johnson had the extra pass to Kinane right there. You got to make that. This is kind of a microcosm here as Briggs couldn't hold on to Kinane, may have tried to force it, but instead, this is something she's going to have to do all season long is let's get others involved. I know that may be an extreme example of that, but that's something that you discussed with her today. There's so much pressure and expectations on this floor, this NC State team to make it to the Final Four. Kanane can't do it all herself. She's got to do her part, but they've got to find a way to make all these many pieces fit together. Well, every scouting report is going to be aimed at keeping Odisa Kanane off balance. They're going to send doubles from multiple places. They're going to mix it up on her. Her ability to handle it with poise, find her open teammates, get them great shots. I mean, you know, Westmore talked about it. You got to pass up good shots for great shots. And Elisa Kunane's touches have opportunities to get everyone great shots on the floor. Zippy Broughton has come on for Florida transfer from Rutgers. So she is on the floor right now against her former Rutgers teammate, Di Diamond Johnson. Here's Alberte Rimdahl, freshman from Denmark. Rimdahl does what she's been doing and attacks the basket. She's been kind of a, I know she's from Finland, but she's been the Swiss Army knife for this Florida team, does a little bit of everything. She has, and Florida's going to run a lot of that. <laughs> Florida's going to run a lot of that high ball screen action, and, and with Kiki Smith being a, a little bit, you know, under the weather in terms of her health, Rimdahl's going to get a lot of touches. I apologize to our Danish viewers and friends. <laughs> That's a confused thing. Kinane knocked away by Duke, but into the hands of Hayes.
Torres. There's Grenade fighting on the glass again. I just love the way that NC State is attacking the paint. They're attacking it with penetrating passes. They're attacking it off the bounce. Now they're trying to extend the defense a little bit, and it pays off as Hayes and Perez team up to turn over Rundal. And a timeout being called here by Florida to talk things over as NC State has turned things around here in the first quarter. They were down by two at the first media timeout. They're up by five here in the first. Talked about at the top of the telecast, Steph White. Lisa Kinane, seven points, five rebounds so far in her eight minutes of work. Well, she's been aggressive with the ball. She's been aggressive on the offensive glass, getting her early touches, making the right decision, making the right play. Five of the nine rebounds so far for NC State. Off the floor to turnover and the floor to timeout. Johnson, Crutchfield wide open. That's another three for Kai Crutchfield, her third of the quarter. There's so much movement in the offense for NC State, and being patient in that offense is key, getting wide open shots. Briggs gets a wide open look. That won't drop, and knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Hayes. Good fight on the glass by Manu de Oliveira. Good to see her back on the court for Florida after she was unable to join the team last year because of COVID travel restrictions, was down in Brazil. Manu made it back to the States in June. Fake Duke. Briggs has to take a deep three. Crutchfield has it. Briggs got a hand in there and is called for the foul. It'll be two free throws on the other end. We talked about Manu. They they tried to stay connected to her even though she was stuck in Brazil. They had this very nicely produced cardboard cutout. A lot of zooms back and forth. The cardboard cutout right there cheering for her teammates on the bench. But what an amazing story. The, the things that Manu had to do to keep herself in shape. She had to get creative, you know, and, and to be able to stay connected, not only in a, in a, from that distance, but in a COVID year is a tribute to this staff, to Kelly Ray Finley, to making sure that they keep this team together. I heard a lot of those stories during the lockdown where you couldn't get to a gym. So Manu, we were told, filled up paint buckets with concrete and was mm -hmm. doing some workouts to try to stay in as good a shape as possible, was playing some ball in Brazil as well. So back here in the States. Great D, great she's rotation. A, she's had a really good first quarter. Camille Hobby into the game for NC State. Crutchfield doing it on both ends of the floor so far. Final minute of the first. Perez, nifty little fake to get free. Reina Perez is just so poised, under pressure, plays with such a good pace. Oh. Hobby picks up the foul on the other end. Final minute of the first quarter. 10 unanswered points for NC State. Strong close here to the first quarter as the cards will go to the free throw line. And Florida struggling from outside the three point line. NC State has dialed up the defense a little bit. They've made it very difficult to Florida, for Florida to get into what they want to do. And then when Florida settled for threes, they're one for seven from outside the three-point line. Well, Florida's strength is getting getting to the basket. NC State really turned it up on the defensive end, forcing those jump shots. Great look. Yeah, that's Perez to Hobby who is fouled. Again, just, just the pace that Reina Perez plays with. She makes the right pass on time, on target. That's a second personal foul on Faith Dukes. So she will check out, and Tatiana Weish will come into the game. Now Florida is a team, and, and Kelly Ray Finley talked to us about this, about changing their defensive identity. You know, they really want to be more aggressive, really want to get after it. You have to be able to do that without putting players to the foul line. 
given players easy opportunities to get buckets. You know, against Towson, Towson shot 33 free throws. So now you have to be disciplined while you're being aggressive and changing that identity on the defensive end. Well, it feels like more of the same here in this game because Florida's already committed eight fouls here in the first quarter. The Oliveira shut off by Hobby. And bounced out of bounds, and it'll be NC State basketball shot clock off. 15.8 to go in the quarter, and the Oliveira is slow to get up. stay in the game. Let's see what happened here. Yeah, took the tumble on the drive trying to get around Hobby. Diamond Johnson's really going to work that middle pick and roll as the clock runs down. Good luck. And a foul is called. Now we'll send Hobby to the free throw line. And Florida's aggressive on the defensive end. They're going to stay in that show. And Diamond Johnson and Reina Perez both making the right read, dropping it off to the bigs. So NC State continues to pick up points at the free throw line. Now seven of nine this quarter. Johnson slows down Kiki Smith, and that will do it. Slow start, but a good finish for NC State, led by their defense, and also the three-point shooting from Kai Crutchfield. Three threes in the first quarter, and NC State puts 29 on the board in the first. Good quarter for Elisa Kunane and her NC State teammates. Kunane with seven points, five rebounds. She was fouled four times. So back to your point when Wes Moore talked about us, we got to start inside and try to find things there and then kick it out if we want to find Crutchfield. And she ended up with 10 points. Yeah, Crutchfield was really good as well. And, and I, what I like about NC State, Wes Moore said this, look, I like to shoot the three as much as anybody. And against Wofford, they shot a lot early. Now they're getting it inside. They're attacking off the bounce. They're getting inside out. They're getting great shots instead of settling for good shots. Brown Turner to Isaiah James, freshman into the game. And Florida changing it up on the defensive end of the floor, going to a 2-3 zone and trying to get a little bit more aggressive on the ball. They found the open shooter was the freshman James. Second chance here for NC State. A little hot pass from Johnson trying to get it to Hobby off the mark. Really, that was the key part of the turnaround for NC State was they were turning Florida over, turning those points, those turnovers into points. Yeah, getting more aggressive on the defensive end, really cutting down on those driving lanes, forcing Florida to make the extra pass. Or taking an outside shot, which is what Tatiana White had to do right there. Hobby. Good little move by the junior from Jacksonville. And what a luxury for Westmore. You have Hobby who can come in and be a power post. You have Kanane who you can move around, play a little bit of finesse as well. Oh, Madison Hayes with the clean block. You can just sense the defensive intensity picking up for NC State, really trying to make a statement on the defensive end of the floor. Nothing coming easy right now for Florida. Numbers the other way for NC State. Johnson for three. Offensive rebound comes down to James. Brown Turner gets her first points. Another turnover for Florida. Ch 
Johnson works with Hobby. Got her. Got to go to the basket right there. Well, Hobby's playing shoeless. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she has her ankle wrap, but she's down the one shoe, so a sock and a shoe. That's why she didn't roll. Maybe that's why she didn't roll to the basket. That's right. I can't do the pick and roll with just one I, shoe. I can't plant right there. Or oh, she lost the shoe right in front of us. That's why I didn't see it. Yeah, that's going to really impact your, your cutting ability. <laughs> yeah, yeah, her ability to change directions quickly impacted. Westmore really high on Camille Hobby. He loves what she brings, wants to find a way to get her more minutes. I think I gave the previous NC State hoop to Brown Turner. It was James, the freshman, who scored nine points in her collegiate debut Friday. So getting your first points today. NC State on top by 18. Really making it tough for Lavender Briggs. When Lavender Briggs is right, she is one of the very best players in the country, not just in the SEC. She's explosive. She can score in a variety of ways. She's underrated on the defensive end as well. But the question is, when will she be right? Because that foot injury has really slowed down what she's been able to do. It hinders not only her ability to move, but it hinders her ability to practice. And she's one of those players who's a gym rat who likes to get in a rhythm by being in the gym. And she, quite frankly, she's just limited to how much pressure she can put on that foot. Really struggled in the last game against Towson, was three of 16 from the field. She's one of six here today. In. Made something out of what was shaping up to be nothing, but not going to doubt Diamond Johnson. She's had a good first half. She's got six. Answered back by Florida. First points of the quarter go to Kiki Smith. Perez open three. Kanane got tangled up with Christina Moore. Who picks up the foul? When you have a player like Diamond Johnson and Perez on the floor together, both of them can create for themselves, both of them can create for others. Have that point guard mentality, but also able to score the basketball. This, this NC State team is one of the most balanced teams in the country. Their offensive efficiency, if you look at the synergy ratings, as Debbie Antonelli loves to use our synergy <laughs> ratings, right? They're excellent in every category. So you have to pick your poison defensively. Got to use a Debbie Antonelli reference. We're at NC State. Well, I mean, it's... The only regret is we waited to the second quarter. That's to do true. It. That's the truth. Do that yes. In the first quarter. Sorry, Deb. So when you're looking at, you know, for someone who doesn't know what the synergy ratings are, what are the things that you're looking for? Some of the things that stand out to you for what NC State does. Well, the, the thing that stands out to me is just offensively, they're rated excellent in almost every category. They're balanced. They're efficient. They're effective. They're patient. So when you're thinking about how are you going to play them, how are you going to scout them defensively, what do you take away? And, and, and most teams are going to try to start with Kunain early. You want to play the percentages, but this is also a great three-point shooting team as well. So you have to try to keep them off balance. You have to try to take them out of a rhythm because when they're in the rhythm, they're very, very tough to stop. They never really got into rhythm against South Carolina. They battled back in that game, got within a point in the second half, but they were never able to go in front. Now, you're playing against South Carolina. You're right. talking about a deep, talented team. That's and an excellent defensive right team. Yes. I mean, an excellent defensive team. They South Carolina has always been terrific on that end of the floor, and they turned it up against NC State. They will take you out of what you want to do. And then in game two, we talked about against Wofford, things weren't clicking. And mm -hmm. a little fire and brimstone at halftime seemed to get NC State going. There you go, all day long. They're going to have that pick and roll all day long. Florida's ready for it, though. Moore stood her ground, and here come the Gators. Broughton with the push. Moore can't get the floater. Kanane's got a rebound. Had it knocked away. 
25-19 in the second. Every Saturday, the huddle, Jordan Cornette, Eric McLean, E.J. Manuel, Mark Rick, they get you ready for ACC football. Previewing all the games, keeping you updated on all things ACC football. 10 a.m. Eastern right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Canane on the offensive glass. Controlled by the Gators. Briggs. Tonders. Smith will try a deep three. And knock it down. Kiki Smith. Kiki Smith. Two of six from outside the three-point arc in her first two games of the season. Gets a three, and Florida has now outscored NC State here in this quarter. 7-0 run. James, step back three. I don't know if that's going to be a shot that's going to be reviewed favorably in the film room by Wes Moore. <laughs> I think if you take the first one in rhythm, <laughs> but to take the little sidestep bounce and... James, the freshman, tries to feed Kinane, and things get a little sloppy here. So let's see if Florida can take advantage of NC State losing their rhythm a bit. Broughton couldn't finish. Well, and this is where you see the experience right here of Perez. We've had a couple of empty possessions. We've got to get a good one right here. We're going to execute in the half court. Looking to go inside. Coming to the backside. Kinane has tripled. Got to get it there. That's right. Good look. Perez couldn't get it. Kinane battles inside and a jump ball. Possession arrow will give it to Florida when we come back. A little sloppy right now. Seven straight points scored by Florida as the Gators trying to hang around here in Raleigh. Moments ago, a freshman for NC State, Isaiah James, tried a step back three pointer. She was just about out of bounds. And like, well, Westmore's not going to like that one. So as that timeout was called, he grabbed his freshman and just like, yeah. <laughs> class is always in session. That's right? right. It's a good teaching moment. Good teaching moment. Again, she had the shot off the catch. And if you're taking it in rhythm, it's one thing. But the step back three, not what Westmore wants. You can see it's really quite the challenge for so many of these coaches, including Westmore and NC State, to incorporate freshmen with transfers, with players who have stuck around for a COVID year. There's so many coaches around the country who are trying to navigate. All right, I, I've got how many kids dressed? I've got right. one basketball. How are we going to make this work? So many kids dressed. And when you're recruiting, you're not recruiting anticipating players staying for an extra year because of COVID. When you're transferring, you're not anticipating you know, players staying an extra year for COVID. So it really is a tough balancing act, and it's, it's a lot about – Managing, managing egos, managing expectations. But like Elisa Kunane, uh, Jakia Brown Turner told us today, we have to sacrifice for our team. We have to sacrifice to get to where we want to go, which ultimately for NC State is the Final Four. Now that's hard for some players to do because if you know Kunane's played at a high level and there's no question she's scored her share of points. Now it's about winning a championship. But for some players who've like, well, I've, I've waited my turn and I. I want to play, I want to score, I want to I want to be a part of it all. And trying to put that individual piece aside for a team piece is going to be a challenge for some of these teams nationwide. It, it is. It's going to be tough. It's going to be a balancing act, and it's a long season. And after coming off, you know, last season, which was which was so unique, and, and being able to put some of those things aside for an ultimate goal is, is an important part of what a coach is doing right now. NC State had missed six field goal attempts in a row before Kunane hit. When you see Kunane and Jones going right back to the rim. Moore all the way at Kunane. Crutchfield. That's a three. And again, what a good decision by Perez. She didn't take a contested shot. She backed it up, and then she got a great shot for a teammate. Who is great from outside the three-point line. She is four for four this afternoon.
you can see just the hesitancy by Lavender Briggs. She's someone who would come off of those middle screen and rolls and attack the basket. Instead, she's settling for a three to beat the shot clock and knocks it down. Well, Florida will take it. They've been struggling from outside the three-point line. Two for nine before Briggs knocked down that three. She's got seven. And a foul called on Rimdahl. Busy Friday coming up on the ACC Network. Two volleyball matches in the afternoon, two men's hoop games at night. Towson and Pittsburgh will get the hoop going at six, and then Coach K and ninth-ranked Duke will host Lafayette at Cameron Indoor. All games right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app, one app, one tap. Just so great to see, you know, watching here the South Carolina game against NC State in a full house. We've got a good crowd here today. Great just look. seeing people at Cameron Indoor again or games yes. at North Carolina, you know, you just – it was great to see basketball last year, but to, to get that full experience with the crowd and the traditions is something I didn't realize we missed so much. You know, just being here courtside with you, Steph, you know, is is the energy. really cool. Yeah. I mean, you just can't re recreate the energy of what it's like to have fans in the stands. Well, Dane now knocking down threes. She's got 14 first half points. And we talked about it in the open. Important for NC State to establish her, get her in a rhythm, and they've done just that. Dukes got stopped by Jones, but a foul called on Kayla Jones. Well, I love this action right here with Johnson finding Kunane, getting to the rim, getting an easy bucket. And then when you have some confidence, you step outside and you knock it down. Kinane was 0 for 1 from outside the three-point line in the first two games of the season. She is someone who has been very good from outside the arc, 41% in her career on threes. And good defense by Kinane to block Duke's shot. Well, it feels like, to your point, Kinane has done it all here in the first half for NC State, but she hasn't had to be the only one to do it all. We've seen Crutchfield knock down shots. We've seen the work by Johnson at the point, and Perez sharing the basketball. It's been a good team effort here for NC State. Johnson with four to go on the game clock. Jones to beat the buzzer. I was saying something about everybody contributing right. something for That's NC right. State. I think Kayla Jones just provided the exclamation point. Great patience by NC State. We want to get the last shot, and Kayla Jones so instrumental in, in everything that this team does. Knocks down the big three. Good patience, good poise. The rainbow arcing three. Sometimes it's better when it's contested, right? Get it off, it goes in. NC State pulling away. Stand in the full court on the defensive end of the floor. They played a little token zone pressure. I would expect Florida to pick up their man-to-man -man pressure, full court, try to get some easy buckets, try to fuel some turnovers. Different look in the starting five here for the Gators as Manu De Oliveira will get the start here in the second half. Faith Dute out there as well. So it looks like Jordan Merritt not in the starting five. Merritt in the first half played 11 minutes was one of four from the field three of those four attempts were from outside the three-point line had just three points just look at the way nc state off the ball is really sitting on the paint they're forcing florida to put the ball up from the outside crutchfield perez Little stutter step, maybe nice. had the opening, but waits for her teammate to cut. And after all that, Perez will knock down the two. Four points for Perez. Florida's really got to get the ball moving on the offensive end. Attack the, gl uh, the glass like that, but certainly get more touches. It's one or two passes, if that, and trying to get a shot. They got to get the ball moving side to side. Double double now for Elisa Kunane. That's her 10th rebound to go along with her 14 points. First double double this year, 26th of her career. 
Uh, I like this five outlook that NC State's given. All right here's the double on ball, but really opening up the paint, opening up driving lanes. Uh, tough pass for Kanane to handle, delivered by Jones with the shot clock winding down. That's one Jones would like to have back. You have the mismatch down low. You want to be able to deliver that, execute. Christina Moore on the floor for Florida. Ricards leans in, can't get it. Briggs, second chance here for Smith. Got her. Oh, missed right. her on the catch. Price still worked it in, and then a three-second violation as Kunane was in the lane for a little while. That's where the timing, really anticipating that seal. Kunane did a great job of posting for the next pass. Briggs trying to work on Crutchfield or stood her ground. And then off of the leg of Briggs, or no, off NC State, so it'll be Florida ball, 11 to shoot. Ricards will trigger the inbound for the Gators. Duke turns inside for two. Six points for Faith Duke. Nothing's coming easy for Florida. Nope. And one of the <laughs> things they need to do offensively is they got to get some more ball reversals. They're playing on one side of the floor. NC State's really able to load up. Good D. Florida gets a stop, and they look for Kiki Smith. Tracked it down and got the two. First points of the second half for Smith, leading Florida with 12. That floater's her shot. It sure is. She's really good at she's that. She's got a lot of shots. Game. She's she got does. a lot. Of, she's got a lot in her toolkit. But that floater has been one that we've seen her drop time and again during her career with Florida. Florida picking those up those quick hands. And Florida's picking up the defensive intensity. Look for NC State to try to get a backdoor action right here. We saw them working on it in shoot around today, but you really see an Duke easy dunk Duke inside. inside. Six points for Faith Duke. Creating a turnover, getting it right there. Kiki Smith, you said getting in her bag. Is that what you said? Yeah, toolkit. Oh, toolkit. Yeah, toolkit. Okay, yeah. all right. Bag of tricks, toolkit. Yep, uh -huh. I mean. Jones defended by Moore. They work it back inside to Kunane and Dukes. You know, Steph talked about it before. Point of emphasis, this is something that is not new. This is something that was brought in a, a couple of years ago, but officials have been reminded, look, you know, freedom of movement has to be allowed here. You've got to watch how the contact is, and these things are going to be called a little bit. But certainly in the early part of the season, you wonder if it's going to continue all season long. No question. When you're talking about one hand, two hand touches out on the perimeter, displacement inside, great look. Kunane rolls to the basket for two. NC State's been able to score on that screen and roll action all night long. Florida has to get a rotation. Nobody coming over to help. The cards. Take it away by Brown Turner. Jones. Smith, tough shot. Crutchfield gets called for the foul. Kiki Smith is so good driving down that lane line. And you no, know, she, she has said time and time again, until you stop me from going left, I'm going to keep going left. So 
The grad student from Maryland will head to the free throw line to shoot a couple. SEC second team selection a year ago, 19 points a game, three and a half assists, six and a half rebounds. Led the team in assists and in rebounding. This is generally a good rebounding team because the guards get on the glass with Smith leading the charge. Reminder what's coming up on Friday, a couple of volleyball games in the afternoon, a couple of hoop games at night, closing out with Lafayette and Duke at Cameron Indoor. Coach K's team going up against the Leopards, 8 o'clock Eastern time, Friday on ACCN and the ESPN app. So Crutchfield will check out. She has two fouls. Brown Turner with a couple of fouls. Faith Dute with three fouls for Florida. And here's Florida coming with the man-to-man -man pressure that we're so used to seeing them bring. They hadn't brought it yet in this game, but backing off. There's going to be a backdoor opportunity. Florida really getting out on the, on the perimeter, denying those passing lanes. That's a good post-to-post -post action. Kanane forces it up, gets it to drop. That post-to-post -post really looking to force Florida to switch, getting a smaller big on Kanane, getting her easy buckets. Christina Moore will launch a three. Good job by Talia Weish. Second chance here for the Gators. Smith looks to weave through traffic. Pulls up instead, and Jones has the rebound. Perez off the window for two. Well, if your on-ball screen defense is set up to show as Diamond Johnson gets a steal down there, can't convert, if your on-ball screen defense set up to show, you've got to force her into it, and they did not do that. But all day long, NC State has been able to exploit the two-man game, and Crutchfield such a good job of drawing two defenders, delivers the pass on time, Kanane knocks it in. Well, after scoring 21 points total in her first two games, Elisa Kinane has found her rhythm here this afternoon. 18 points on 7 of 10 shooting and a double-double her first this season. Lindsay well, State's really made it a point to get her some touches, but not just getting her touches on the block, getting her touches off the move. And she's done her due diligence on the offensive glass, getting second and third opportunities as well. Camille Hobby into the game right now for NC State. Briggs shut off by Hayes, and Briggs dragged the pivot foot. Good job by Madison Hayes. You know, it's going to be interesting to see how players like Madison Hayes, who had some really good minutes last year for Mississippi State, now transfers in. How are these transfers and freshmen going to be able to make their mark or find their way? And for a player like Hayes, it could be coming in, playing hard on defense, getting some turnovers, bringing a little energy, and then the offense may flow after that. Well, one of the things about Madison Hayes is she just has such a high motor. She's always competing, always playing hard, and you know, Wes Moore really likes that, and to try to be able to reward her with more minutes, but she's got to find her role with an established team, and, and sometimes that's defending and rebounding and just being somebody who does the dirty work. SEC All-Freshman team a season ago. We're getting back into this five out, opening up some driving lanes. Over to Hayes. Genesis Bryant into the game for NC State. Four on the shot clock. Hayes was running out of real estate. Johnson tried to flip it up, and Florida comes away with it. Before that sequence, NC State shooting 53% from the field. Florida 31% from the field. That will drop for three for Ricards, her first field goal. It's one of the few times offensively we've seen Florida really make the extra pass. A lot of things trying to happen off of the ball screen, off of, off of creating for yourselves, and continuing to, to really work on offensively. Finding the extra pass is going to be important for Florida moving forward. Ace. Hobby couldn't get it. Another stop for the Gators. So Florida trying to climb back into this one. Three minutes to go in the third quarter. Oh, 
Hobby right there just waiting, and there's the rotation. Moore got there, and the foul called on Johnson. Well, really good ball movement right here. Lavender Briggs, and then the extra pass, and Ricard's able to knock it down. And when you're a team who, who runs a lot of ball screen offense, sometimes you can get tunnel vision. Sometimes you can pound it too much. As soon as you draw two defenders, you got to find that next pass. And sometimes it's two passes later like that before you get the shot. Ricard's fouled by Johnson. That'll be the third team foul on NC State this quarter. Before the shot, so it'll be Florida ball on the baseline. Comes Kai Crutchfield back into the game for Johnson. Briggs for three. Hayes gets on the floor. Knocked out of bounds by Florida. It'll be NC State basketball. Briggs wasn't alone getting on the floor. Madison Hayes. Briggs fighting for it, Moore fighting for it. Remind you that the huddle is on every Saturday. Jordan Cornette, Eric McLean, E.J. Manuel, Mark Richt. They'll have everything you need to know about ACC football, all the news, all the previews. That's at 10 a.m. Eastern here on ACCN and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Dry Warren, freshman, comes in for Florida. Florida down by 21 at halftime. They were down by as much as 23 here in this quarter. And there's the first hoop for Jakia Brown-Turner, which sounds kind of odd to say considering she's their leading scorer through for the first two games this season, but. Not even just the first hoop, the first shot attempt yeah. by Jakia Brown-Turner. And that just really speaks to the depth and the balance of this NC State team. You really can't focus on one or two players as Ricards knocks down another three. Because any night, one or two can step up. Any night, one or two are going to show out. Ricard's finding the shooting touch in the early going this season. Now five for seven through three games from outside the three-point line. Moore needs help. Gets it from Rimdahl. Nice. Got to get a little quicker. It's a good look. Hobby had time to recover, knock it out of bounds. Gil Levera will come back in for Florida, and Kayla Jones checks back in for NC State. Reminder, Kayla Jones not at full goal yet after suffering the injury in the first round of the NCAAs in the spring, really trying to get her back in the flow. This is game number three for her, of course. Made her first start since the injury against Wofford. Last time out, ended up with team-high 15 points playing on a minutes restriction, so really trying to figure out when and how to, to utilize her best as Ricards starts heating up a little bit for Florida. But you've got Kayla Jones, you've got Jada Boyd who's not playing, who's, who's injured. Hopefully they will get her back in December, but both at that quote unquote four position. And Westmore talk about, talked about really trying to build the depth and utilize in a smaller lineup. Back into Hobby. Hobby turns with the left hand. That won't drop. It's a good repost to get it back into Hobby, but NC State a little bit stagnant right now on the defense or the offensive end of the floor. And if you're Florida, you want to keep feeding Ricards because she has eight points in this quarter. That one won't drop. Final minute of the third. Crutchfield tried to track it down, and NC State. Getting a little sloppy here as Bryant threw it away. And another teachable moment. You know, Westmore talking to Bryant. We want one shot. We want to get the last shot of the quarter. So Perez comes back in along with Cunane. Ricards. He stays ready for her because the cards look like she wanted to take that last shot, so Dale Levera has to hoist it up. 
Well, Florida ended up outscoring NC State 14-10 in that quarter. Still some work to be done down by 17 as we head to the fourth in Raleigh. Well, you can see Florida has a new addition to their coaching staff, someone that you know quite a bit, Steph, as you take a look at the story of the score. NC State won for their last eight in the third quarter. Ricards at eight points. That's Julie Plank, who's yes. on the bench now for Florida. Julie Plank brings experience to Kelly Ray Finley's staff. It's been a long time at Stanford, 10 years at Stanford, two national championships, then in the WNBA. I played for her in Indiana. Nice to see Julie back on the sidelines. Now, you were telling me before, she taught Tamika Catchings everything, everything Tamika knows, knows about basketball. Everything okay, I just want that because I know Tamika's watching. So That's she, right. she'll, I'm sure my phone will start buzzing any minute now. I'm like, well, not everything I know. <laughs> <laughs> There's that uh, backdoor cut that we were talking about. Florida really looking to get aggressive on the defensive end, and NC State takes advantage. Rimdahl back to Ricards. I mean, the NC State show and so Crutchfield. early. Good job by Crutchfield on the deflection. You see Coach Plank, just a portion of her resume. She just brings so much experience to, to this young staff that Kelly Ray Finley has and experience to this team. You know, so many players nowadays really want to play at the next level, and, and, and Julie certainly understands what that takes. Kinane. Great dive. Oh, great dish by Kinane. She'll get the assist at that to her totals as Jones finishes. It's just movement without the ball. You see the double team comes. That's a great read by Jones to dive and Kinane being able to deliver the pass. Second assist for Kinane to go along with her 18 points and 12 rebounds. They're going to run that again, and they're going to get the backside three. Rimdahl launches a three. Knocked out of bounds by NC State. Florida will have it. Smith, Briggs, and Moore coming back on for Florida. Here you see the double, and Kayla Jones, a great job of reading it. Late rotation by Florida. Gets him an easy two. Smith. The Kiki floater won't drop this time. And the rebound for Brown Turner. And Jones was able to track that one down before it went out of bounds. Skip. To Jones, wide open for three. Ball gets moving side to side. A couple of paint touches. You get him over rotated, that skip pass is there all day long. That's another assist for Kinane. Three and double figures now for NC State. On top by 24. You know, we had a slow third quarter. Westmore comes back with his starters, wants to get a little punch of energy as Kiki Smith knocks in another floater. 16 now for Kiki on six of 13 shooting. NC State scored the first seven points of that fourth of the fourth quarter before Florida got the hoop. More with the boots. Faith Dutes will come back in as Tonders will check out. Crutchfield was fouled, and she'll go to the free throw line. Well, Crutchfield is four for four from the three, so you, you've got to be able to get out there. You certainly don't want to foul a three-point shooter. But you can't get hit by those screens. If you're guarding a player like Crutchfield, who I, I believe is six for six in the last two games from the three-point line, you, you cannot get hit. you got to get on her hip. you got to chase. you got to force her to run off of the three-point line, put the ball on the floor. You are correct. She is six for six, four for four today. Was two for two in the win against Wofford last time out. Three free throws here as Crutchfield missed the first. A 
reminder, Saturday morning, we're getting down to the nitty-gritty in college football season. It'll get you ready on the huddle starting at 10 a.m. Eastern time here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. I think in these parts, the, the less I say about what happened yesterday in college football, the better um, after what happened at Wake Forest. So we're just going to keep moving. It's a new week, NC State. It's a new week. You have a top five women's basketball program. <laughs> it's great to have the fans back in the stands supporting them. Yeah, it was tremendous to watch that Tuesday evening game, the season opener against the number one team in the country. Just such a great atmosphere here. Corner three is good for Brown Turner. Yeah, you could feel the energy through the television. I mean, watching oh, yeah. that game, it was, it was incredible. And, of course, ended the season with a few sellouts last year. And, or two years ago. And, of course, I mean, can't wait for the annual Play for K game. Yes. February 7th it is this year where they'll have this place packed. Timeout called by Florida. We'll take it as well here in the fourth. Westmore working down the bench. A little smile on his face. He said he wanted to have a little bit more fun. It didn't look like he was having much fun at times in the first half against Wofford. And he'd love to be able to celebrate number 750 if NC State is able to put this one away. That's a nice, look, that's, a, that's a big number. That's a big number. Holy I smoke. mean, he has had success everywhere he's been. Sure has. And, and look, that's what a coach's face who's having fun looks like right there. The, the intensity, we'll, ha we'll have fun afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> the fun is in the win. That's right. Jessica Timmons is into the game for NC State. Another one of the freshmen getting a chance. Florida going back to that 2-3 zone. And here's Timmons, open look for three. How about that for the freshman? Had seven points in her collegiate debut on Friday. All from the foul line, so nice yep. to be able to knock down a shot. First field goal for her and then lost out of bounds. Last touch by Florida. You know, Florida really trying to buy some time here for Lavender Briggs to become Lavender Briggs again. If you obviously scouted her tons of time, had to come up with ways to try to stop her, and it's hard to do. Diamond Johnson knocks down the three. But she just does not look like she's got that step yet for Florida. And you hope she's able to get it before too long as she's pulling up here for the Gators. Followed her miss, and she'll get the two. First yeah. points of the second half. And it's one thing for, for a player like Lavender Briggs to, to not have the explosiveness or not have the lift, um, but the timing yes. and the rhythm. And, and you, you can't duplicate that if you can't practice. And, and so for, for somebody like her to really be able to get the reps in practice is important. But she's also a dynamic scorer, and whether she's hitting or not, you know she can get hot. And, and so for Kelly Ray Finley, having to balance the lack of practice with how much you play in the game is, is, is a tough balance. And you see the junior, second team all-conference last year, played in 18 games, averaged better than 19 points a game before the foot injury on February 15th. After dropping 41 on Arkansas. Against Arkansas. At the time of her injury, I remember I, I wrote down the note, they were just outside Charlie Cream's, in Charlie Cream's bracketology, just outside the NCAA tournament field. And, and she goes down with the injury and such an important part of everything that Florida does, they were Unable to get back on track. Foul called there. It comes with 4.56 to go in the fourth quarter. Timeout on the floor. NC State in control on their way to win number two. Well, we've come to expect it from Elisa Kinane, and we saw today a complete game leading NC State. Yeah, it was important for the NC State to get her touches early. They got her some easy looks. She stepped out, knocked down the three-point shot as well. I like how she got her touches in this ball game. She's getting it off the screen and roll. She's getting it off of moving without the basketball, attacking off the bounce, crashing the offensive glass, being able to find different ways to score and easy ways to score. 
for Elisa Kune. 18 points, 12 rebounds, four of those 12 rebounds on the offensive glass, seven of 10 from the field, and three assists to add in as well. Bill Levera has it knocked away, and here comes NC State's Hayes. Another three splashed by Jessica Timmons. She gave the little jab, got her defender off, and knocked that down. Well, Timmons is known as a three-point shooter. Competitor. First points for Zippy Broad. Go ahead, Steph. And we, well, we've talked about you know the, the challenge that Westmore has, and he, he's a number 12 ranked class in the country freshman. You know, two transfers in Diamond Johnson and Madison Hayes that got a lot of playing time at their respective schools before now. And, and how do you fit them all in? How do you keep everybody happy? And games like this give you an opportunity to get them some experience to get them a, a rhythm and to find what their role is going to be within this team. I guess, and we talked about it before, winning is how you keep everybody happy, <laughs> especially if, if you're a team that was a number one seed heading into the NCAA tournament last year. There was talk of making a, a ring signifying that they had been to three straight Sweet 16s, and the players said, we, we don't want any of those mm -hmm. kind of runner-up right. type rings. We want something that we could still play for, and that's getting to a Final Four, taking that next step. So you know these experienced players, this core group here, is they've got that winning. They've got that team mentality. You see what happened last year, 22-3. and three, They beat South Carolina but ended up losing in the regional finals to a very good Indiana team. They'll have a rematch with Indiana, by the way, coming up in just a bit. But oh, and Westmore talked about, you know, that, that Elite Eight loss or that Sweet 16 loss to Indiana and said, we just have to be tougher. You know, we've got to be tougher. And, and, and that, leaving that taste in their mouth, is why a lot of these players decided to come back. They want to make it to a Final Four. They understand the big picture. But you also can't overlook what's right in front of you. Taking it one day at a time, taking it one game at a time, continuing to build their depth at each position is, is important as Madison Hayes gets a bucket right there. Her first points of the afternoon. And I really think as you take a look nationally, it, there are so many teams with so much talent. We saw here with South Carolina in here the other day. UConn opened their season with a win against Arkansas. Paige Beckers had 34 points as James comes through with her four points in the second half. She's got four. Stanford, a team to watch. Maryland, a team that's got a lot of firepower back. You can go on and on. There are so many teams with so many familiar faces who've returned and then some interesting additions that, like, trying to handicap the field and who's going to be in the Final Four. I know we're in November. That's what's going to make games in November, games in December, these non-conference games, let alone the conference games, so exciting because there's going to be so much premium on getting wins and trying to be a team that's going to be a number one seed in the tournament. There's no question about it. You, you have to win the games that you're supposed to. You have to prepare yourself to take that next step. Brought in at the free throw line. A reminder coming up on Friday, closing out our quadruple header day on ACC Network. A couple of volleyball matches, men's basketball, double header with Towson taking on Pittsburgh, and then Duke at Cameron Indoor taking on Lafayette. That's coming up on Friday here on ACCN. Warren and their offensive foul taking the charge was Genesis Bryant. No, that's something that if you're Westmore, you're looking for ways where players can contribute. It's a 31-point game, and you've got a player taking a charge. That's always a good thing. That's a great sign. It's a player who wants to be on the floor. And, and Genesis Bryant, another player that, that Westmore is really, really high on. And, you know, get, getting back to your point, the parity in, in women's basketball is at an all-time high. You have to be ready to play day in and day out. And what I love about what we've seen already in this young season is we've seen top-notch competition early. Not only NC State, South Carolina, 
the Arizona, Louisville. We've got you know Texas and Stanford. I mean, we're we're seeing these these top matchups early, and and love to see it in the, in this game. You could see too a week from tomorrow in the Bahamas. You could see South Carolina, UConn, if things play out the right way in that tournament down at Atlanta. It's the battle for Atlanta. So. That, that's not even on anybody's radar right. yet because it's like, well, there's UConn took on Arkansas today and South Carolina was in South Dakota right. this weekend and they just played NC State. Yeah, everywhere you turn, there's another great game and it's going to be that way all season long. And Westmore will not be happy about everything. <laughs> I, I love, you know, they, they beat Wofford and they, they did some good things against South Carolina, but. I love he told us this week when he was at Chattanooga, they knocked off Tennessee. Now, when you're coaching Chattanooga and you beat Tennessee, you've done something. That, that That's a pretty big moment. And the team was feeling great about themselves until they came out of the film room the next day. And, you know, he was pointing out all the things that they didn't do right against Tennessee. It's like, did we win that game or did we lose that game to Tennessee? But that's when you've won 749 games, you've got to find the little details to build on and try to improve on. That's right, and, and, and coaches, while yes, you want to celebrate the victories, you're always looking for the next one, right? And you're always looking at what you can do to make your team better. And, and th this journey is about being the best team that they can be in March. It's about putting the best product on the floor every single day. It's about a level of expectation. NC State is going to continue to have a target on their back every night and they have to be prepared to be consistent. And he talked about McDonald's french fries, right? It's about McDonald's <laughs> french fries. Yeah. No matter where in the world you go, they taste the same. We need to be french fries, McDonald's meaning, meaning french you've fries. You've got to be consistent. The you've same. got to be a, a, any night. Day in, day out. Right. I love that reference. Final minute here in Raleigh. 11 different players have scored for NC State, led by Canaan's 18 points. NC State will host Towson here tomorrow to close out the preseason WNIT. Bench is ready to go crazy as Sophie Hart could score her first collegiate points. Walking away with a little wry smile. Towson came in here and beat Florida on Friday. Leah Nelson set a Reynolds record with 39 points. Also added eight rebounds and eight assists. Towson shot the ball so well 12 threes they were on they were contested shots too <laughs> the florida gets wofford here tomorrow then grambling state at home on friday their sec opener is against mississippi state on december 30th nc state Closed out the first quarter on a 14-1 run. They closed out the first half on a 6-0 run. And the crowd here at Reynolds Coliseum coming to their feet to applaud the Wolfpack. And there is a smile at the end of the game for Westmore as his NC State Wolfpack now 2-1 on the season. And he gets career win number 750. Westmore has just been outstanding everywhere he's been and that level of expectation that attention to detail is why he's got 750 career wins great performance for Elisa Kunane leading the way with 18 points 12 rebounds and three assists as NC State wins it by a final score of 85 to 52. They call it a big smile. You can see why Lisa Kinane, another smile after another NC State victory. As the Wolfpack get it done by a final score of 85-52 over Florida. They are now 2-1 on the season. It is not any old win for NC State. It turns out to be career win number 750 for Wes Moore. That's a big number. What? Yeah, well, you didn't even know that. I, I know. know that. That's, that's nuts. That means I'm old. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations on Thank the victory. You. What did you like most about what you saw from your team tonight? Yeah, I just thought we had great energy, you know, much better than I thought we had maybe in the last game or two. So it was good. I thought everybody contributed. I thought defensively we were on edge and 
we're really trying to focus on, you know, getting to the offensive board some. I thought we did a good job of that. Uh, you know, Florida's got a lot of talent out there. Uh, they're going to they're gonna figure it out, and they're going to be pretty good. So it's a good win for us. Coach, we talked about establishing Elisa Cunane early. She got a lot of touches early. You played inside out like you wanted to. What did you like about your offense? Yeah, again, we want to we want to do you know get her a touch, get it back out. You know, we've got two good. Camille Hobby does a good job when she's in there. So again, try to share the ball instead of just coming down and, and forcing something up. Let's work inside out, get a touch, and then let's spot up, knock down that three. And I thought we shot it pretty well today too. I don't know how good you were in chemistry class back in your student days. Were you, how good were you at chemistry? Uh, not you, very good. You have to be a good chemistry teacher now because you're trying to weave in right. the new pieces, the transfers, and keep your existing players happy. Well, you know what I do? I know I know one thing about chemistry. Okay. okay? I'm going to write this if, down. If you put great ingredients in the mix, <laughs> then it's going to be it's going to be good chemistry. And we got great kids. They share the ball. They play well together. They enjoy being around each other, and that makes your chemistry pretty good. And French fries, right? That's what you said. Told us today, French fries. You got to be like McDonald's French fries, right? Fr McDonald's. I was paying attention. I was paying attention. Yeah, so McDonald's said. French fries. We're the same, no matter who we're playing, no matter <laughs> where we are. You can count on it. McDonald's French fries and Wolfpack women's basketball. That's, That's right. it. On that uh, note, he gets the last word on there. Wes, congratulations on the victory. You. Thank Eighty-five you. Thank you to fifty-two. Thank the final. You all. Thank you. As a victory for NC State. Celebrating here, back-to-back -back wins after taking on South Carolina in game number one. And Elisa Kinane was outstanding. You said they had to find a way, Steph, to get her going early. They did, and she continued it throughout the game. And to get her easy buckets, and they were able to do that. She got the ball off the bounce. She got the ball off the move. Stretching the D with a three-point shot. Aggressive on the offensive glass. And, and, and I felt like when you get Elisa Kinane easy opportunities, she's going to knock them down. She got them here today. Elisa joins us now. Was there any fire and brimstone halftime speech this time around, Elisa? Because when we talked to you before the game, the, the Wofford game, Coach had to raise his voice a little bit. Was Were things a little bit better today? It was a little bit better. Okay, he because you had a good yeah. first half. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, because we came out in the first half. Uh, he was excited for us. He said, all right, I'll be easier on y'all today. We appreciate it. <laughs> That's the formula, right? We exactly. talked about that. Uh, what was easier for you tonight? Uh, I think I was able to finish better tonight, um, be more aggressive on my shots and go up to the rim and finish strong. And I think the guards really found me on the post, too. How important is it for your game, you had three assists here today, to find your teammates and get those touches? Because if you kick it out, odds are you may get it back. Exactly. It's huge. Uh, with the four I went in, like, if I get it and I'm double, we got great shooters lined up on the outside. And they're knocking them things down today. So it was really good. Well, the balance of your team. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it, try to figure out who to guard, you know, how to guard. You know, what is one of the things that you like in terms of being in the middle as an offensive player about the balance of your team? You know, just because we have great shooters on the outside, so they're knocking down shots. They can't double me inside, so I'm open for the lane. And then if I'm knocking down inside, they double me. The, the guards are hitting them. You make them pay, right? Exactly. <laughs> they can't guard us. <laughs> you have freshmen. You have transfers. But you have a core group that has had success here at mm -hmm. NC State. How important is it for the upperclassmen, the people who have been here for a while, to kind of set the tone, set the example of what you're playing for and how you want to play? It's huge, you know. We know what we've been through these past two years, like winning ACC championship, but we know that's all over now. So we know what it takes to get there. But we got to go beyond that. Um, so I think that's where they come into play, the freshmen, the transfers, and they look good out there today. You know, well, you've talked about just just staying with what's in front of you, not thinking too far down the road. Mm -hmm. But each game, you have had improvements. You know, what are some of the things that you take from from where you've been and 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 where you need to go to get to where you want to be? You know, if you're better every day than that, then the season we're gonna be a real good team. That's right. Uh, so just get better every day and just learn from film and really like fix our mistakes. Well, big smile on cue. Let's see it. <laughs> after, after a double double, you know we're gonna get it. Congratulations, Thank Lisa. You. Best of luck the rest of the way. Thank you guys. Congratulations. Congratulations. NC State with an 85-52 victory over Florida. The Wolfpack are now two and one on the season. You take a look at the final numbers and good shooting throughout the game as NC State ends up at 52% from the field. And really the defense was something that you may forget when you see 85 points on the board, but a lot of their good stuff came from what they were doing defensively it against sure Florida. It sure did. They locked in on the defensive end. They got some easy scores on the offensive end of the floor. NC State surely showed you what they were about here tonight. That's for sure. They will keep it going tomorrow in the preseason WNIT. They'll host Towson here tomorrow night. And Florida will host Wofford here tomorrow. It has been our pleasure to bring it to you today. Steph White, it was our pleasure to have you back here yes, courtside. Back. Just Thank like you. riding a bike. You didn't miss a thing after a few years. For Steph White.
and our entire crew. I'm Eric Free. Thank you for joining us. It's a victory for fifth-ranked NC. Hey, so good afternoon, Lifeliners.